Hello and welcome back to another behind the scenes video uh, and in this one I have a Sony Walkman it's the WM-FX45 which you can see here released in 1992 to 94 for those not familiar with Walkmans whenever you have the F before the number it also means that there's a, a radio built in kind of saying FM uh, as well as the tape cassette player um, Two nice features, and, and I'll mention the features more in the review part of this model, are uh, it's a uh, two directional one, so you can play it one way and you don't have to flip the tape round, you can then just play it in the other direction. And it also has a uh, Dolby noise reduction as well, which is a real nice feature. It wasn't in a lot of the early ones. So um, this will be a what happens when I kind of get them in type affair. Uh, I'll check it out, I'll open it up, uh, I'll look at uh, the belt, see if that needs replacing. Uh, I'll do some of the speed calibration stuff, probably off camera, that might be another video. And uh, and then after I've done all that, I'll do my standard post review. Um, so I want to get my hands on one of these condition wise. I can already see you, you always get like gunk and stuff down between the buttons. There's some light scratching on there, a little bit of, little bit of uh, fading there. So first impressions aren't too bad comes with a free cassette a terrible one by the look of it roger whittaker it's all that kind of i mean that yeah 1969 uh today we'll be testing it with something a bit more modern um but yeah the condition is not overly bad so i'll be looking i'm already thinking i'll be looking at polishing uh this glass to just get rid of some of the minor stuff and i'll be stripping it down to clean out around those buttons because you can gain access once it's all open um first things first are to uh also just have a general listen on on batteries and a tape so um i did i literally spent about 30 seconds on this last night so i know it comes to life and just i've only got so far so you often see people rush into tearing items down before they've actually really checked them out so couple of batteries going in you can see on this one the clocks illuminating so that's a good sign first things first when I just try the radio so with the radio I'll need a set of headphones which acts as the aerial and we'll find the uh, the FM so the mode is gonna have to be into radio mode and through here I can I can hear in both earphones so I know the stereo is working and then Oh, it's, we're in an AM mode here, uh, band, FM. With all of these, you can hold them down momentarily and they'll search. And I've got sound coming through. It was quite quiet, so I've had a check and yeah, there's the audio vol volume limiting system. So once I turn that off, really quite loud and also no um the crackle coming through on some of these so i'm not going to have to clean the potentiometers too too much as, as i might with other ones so that's the radio working which is a good first sign let's pop the tape in Just making sure there. So yeah, one thing I noticed as I put the tape in is, you see here, that one's quite robust. I've noticed a little bit of movement on that one. See there, and then there's a little bit of a stress mark there where someone's like jammed one in. Thankfully it's not broken. There's not too much you can really do about that, but I would highlight that to the prospective buyer just to use, use with care when placing it in. Uh, obviously I'm gonna need my uh, head, uh, headphones plugged in again. And what I'm gonna start doing is I need to get hold of a set of speakers so it's a little bit easier for me to, to do this kind of thing. So you can hear it's really struggling. But yeah, it's going really, you can hear that going slowly. I'll try the, the other direction. Yeah, so you can hear it like that, really, really going slowly. So that's likely going to be a really loose belt, but we'll also check the motor and stuff. So we're going to have to go in and change the belt and sort things out. So um, 
the later Walkmans are a lot harder to get into because they're all kind of sealed up. This one, this mid nineties one doesn't, doesn't seem too bad because the screws are fairly fairly obvious. So for that, I'll just be using, uh, and they, they're quite shallow plus uh, Phillips head screws. So I'll just be using likely for this one, the um, this uh, head, which is uh, a triple zero. There's always usually one hidden away somewhere, but either. So you're always checking when you're looking for screws. Sometimes there's one hidden inside the battery bay, and sometimes there are often some hidden inside here, kind of around these areas. Um, you can see actually, once the batteries have only been in for a little bit, the clock actually stays on for ages. So that's that's quite good. It shows that it's uh, that the would it be the capacitor that's uh, holding its charge, which is good. Anyway, so that's those ones done there. Just going to give it a little pry and see if we've got all the screws. It'll it'll let us know if we're missing any. Still getting a little bit of resistance somewhere. So yeah, what I've spotted um, is there's a, just a little tab just inside here, which you basically have to just kind of push down. And once you do that, it then it then just releases. So that's that was the missing link. So what we were pushing down on there was, uh, where would it have been? A little release tab just essentially here. It was just keeping it in here. So. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so this is the insides now. And I'll just also, where's that extra screw? So we have the screw there. So make sure we keep hold of that. Okay, so looking inside, thankfully, this, well, it's nice when the belt's already there so we can already see what track it's going to take. So this is the motor here because it goes around and then comes underneath here. That allows it there, therefore to go in the two different directions because it's uh, pushing down on there. Um, and then obviously when you play, you can there'll be different things moving around. So um, having a look at the tension on the belt, you can see here, it's really loose. Like it shouldn't go like that. Now there isn't, you can buy ones that are exactly the same tension, but really after a while of doing these, you get a, you get an idea for just how much spring there should be. Really, it should be like ding, ding, but that's, you know, really far gone. So what I'm going to do is uh, remove this now and then I'll clean everything up and then we're going to, you know, there's no, there's no spring in this. It's all falling apart. I'll select one that's slightly smaller than this. Uh, from my uh, supplies and then we'll reattach that but in the meantime we'll have a little look around here make sure uh, everything's okay so you can see stuff here like this uh, lubricant uh, is dried up we've already mentioned the the button so if we can get this out uh, it means we can clean a few things up you can see there there's that, the battery terminal there that could certainly use some so if we hadn't taken this apart so if this had still been closed up we wouldn't have been able to see actually this battery terminal down here has actually got a fair bit of like gunk usually corrosion is is uh, kind of a green but i certainly don't like the look of that so i'll be cleaning that up as well uh just getting having a general clean up as as we go uh things that i'll be using upstairs with the uh, software calibration will be this one here you can see speed so i'll be adjusting this once i've got the new belt on uh, I'll be calibrating it using that. Um, so let's just see, we've got a ribbon cable here, how easily we can just, you know, we want to take as little apart as possible when doing these uh, these restorations, uh, but enough that we do a good job. So what I want to do right now is basically remove this, this, uh, this uh, internal part from its case so that I can at least check the other side. So having a look, Sometimes you kind of just have to depress and push out. Uh, kind of just, you just nudge them out. I'm looking on this one for, there's usually at least a screw or two. 
in fact on this one here just kind of lifts off so we've got we've got to remember to put this little piece just back in here but that seems to all lift up so let's see if the ribbon cable will just come out fairly easily if it doesn't want to come i'm not going to force the issue probably would come out if, if i wanted we're just gonna i'm gonna leave that in there and just see if we can just get the uh, the internals out anyway usually just pushing the play button down and squeezing it out is the trick so there we go right so this is our play mechanism on the other side so this is uh the head that uh, reads the tape cassette and because this one's going in both directions we've got the, the two cap stands you've got the motor there as well which I know is working but in theory I could apply some bench power supply here if there were some other faults actually on this side it's pretty clean so all I'm going to do is take the opportunity whilst it's open to clean the cap stand and the head I just use uh, and if you remember we spoke about how there's all that gunk down the side of the switch this now allows me access to to get into there so what I'll be doing uh, first of all is just using uh, IPA, isopropyl alcohol, just to have a quick clean up on here. And then give the capstans a good scrub. See this coming off it? That's basically tape residue and dirt residue. Uh, now these things rotate so you need to make sure you get all sides and give them a good scrub until they're nice and clean so nothing coming up oh, a bit more coming off there And then once I'm happy with those, it's then a case of also giving the rollers a quick clean. There's different people use different things. Personally, I just use again the IPA and I'm just taking off dirt from the rollers. Now, usually these are a lot blacker because they're, they're also kind of a rubber anyway. So you get a bit of rubber, but really you're just trying to get that old dirt from all those tapes running through off. And then once that's done, cleaning the head of the recorder now, you can see in here there's a number of different settings because it's going in uh, two different directions. And obviously the head is what reads the tape. So there was already stuff on there. You want that nice and clean. I also don't want to introduce any fluff so there we go a lovely clean head sometimes they can be a bit uh, a bit dirtier than that and they require a bit more scrubbing as for everything else on this side it's all pretty good so uh, as I've just got one of these to hand I'll just quickly use the, the q-tip on this side just because it looked a little sticky whenever something's sticky I like to use IPA because it's really good for that kind of stuff So see that much better on that side now with all that goo gone uh, and I'll take the opportunity at this point uh, to clean up some of the other parts so I'm going to get the q-tip just behind there as well and we'll also have a look around some of these switches if anything comes off clean around it but no point stripping things right down all the way every time and when i first started out i would spend hours and hours and hours but unfortunately when something's only you know 20 30 pounds or whatever if i was to do that all the time i'd, I'd have to stop making videos just because it's no longer viable 
So I'm hoping that just sharing a bit of the work that I do behind the scenes will give, as well as the uh, the reviews, will give people the appreciation for kind of the work that I do. Okay, so I'm happy with all of that. This can also be an op uh, like an opportunity to kind of get access to the front and clean out there, but it, it's actually, you know, I don't do things for the sake of it. It's actually pretty good. Um, what I will do is just maybe get, yeah, it's really not bad at all. Might just get a quick, cloth in there. It's not even that much dust to even blow out, like, like air dust out. Oh yeah, what? Well, this is a good chance as well. Sometimes, well, one of the other things I rely on is just a, a, a fragrance-free wet wipe is really good. So this is a good opportunity now that the buttons are out to get inside there. Because you can't, you can't, you can't clean that when the uh, when the switches are inside. So all of this section, get all of that cleaned out. All around the edges where the dirt would get. So at that stage, I'm now happy. So we'll replace this inside because we can get access to everything else we need and remembering that we've got to slide this back in as well in fact we're not going to put that back in now because i want to do some work on the um contacts and stuff so, and so i don't want to put that in it will reduce my access so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to continue with a bit more ipa to initially take off some of this blue corrosion whatever it is. Don't know what it is, but I don't like it and I don't think it should be there. Now, if there's any spots that, if, there was, if it was a little bit harder to get off, so that's not too bad, there's just a little bit at the top, it's a bit in here, then usually just a little scrape with the fingernail does it. Uh, but if I don't, if I didn't want to do that, then then what I use is, um, well, you can, you know, you can also because this bit's not, it's, it's all just about contact, and you could use a screwdriver. But what I've also got this little uh, set of pens, which are copper, steel, and fiberglass. And if the corrosion was worse, I would use those in uh, starting with the, the uh, most mild, uh, and then work my way up in terms of getting uh, the corrosion off. So I've done that section now, just going to quickly give that, that wipe, so that's much better. Now what we'll do at this stage is just have a little look for where the initial um, kind of lubrication was sitting. So we know there's some here that's crusted up, so what I'm going to do is just look to clean this out and the reason it's there is this little part here is where one of the, uh, the the bits kind of holds against and then it clicks into that bottom rung so it's just going to keep it running a, a little bit more smoothly or operating more, more smoothly I should say so I'm just gonna... I mean with all this stuff we're not trying to get it back to what the factory was like well, sometimes we, 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 we're going to get close. We're trying to get things looking nice and working nice within our own resources, skill and time available. Uh, so that section there, usually there's a bit more uh, around these moving parts. I usually expect a bit more uh, within there because it slides up and down like you'd expect some around there. Doesn't seem to be too much on this one. So all I'm going to do, uh, because I can't see any on there, is uh, put a tiny bit of lubrication in there as we're in here you can see there's a date on there so this one was made in 1993 uh, and also when before we put on because we're going to put on a new belt we've got to make sure that the uh, 
the motor there is is clean of any of uh, any of the residue because we don't want it to uh, slip or anything like that on on the old residue so just again just cleaning that out and then what i'm going to do is just use a bit of a uh, I, I use silicon grease it seems to work quite well uh, rather than anything else a really mild amount and i'm just going to pop it just inside in those areas where where the previous grease was and then I'm just going to put a little dab just in a couple of places there where I can see moving parts now if uh, we were having a, a, any problem with the switches this would be our opportunity to Put some uh, cleaner within these but actually it looks really good inside and i was, wasn't getting any crackle with the volume so now at this stage this is where i'm going to start to now rebuild some of them go in a little bit easier than others right i can see what it is there we go there's a little bit was a stand there it was lined he had to line the stand up now i've got to get this in as well so you can see actually it gives us enough room to just be able to pop that onto the there so that's fine so that's everything uh, put back together at this stage now what we're going to do is um, get another belt that's just slightly smaller than this one here so be right back Okay, so I've had a little look. So obviously we've got this with no elasticity at all. It's stretched a little bit. So what you're looking to do is find and misshapen is find one that's just slightly uh, smaller. So uh, I've picked this one here. I haven't tested it yet. As you can see, it's slightly, just ever so slightly smaller. It might, it might, I might actually need one that's a tiny bit smaller, but I'll, I'm going to try this one first. Now that we know what the routing is because we had it already on. So we're going to root around there. It rooted underneath the uh, the wheel at the top into it and then it came around here that's might be better to go around the bottom first now these belts self straighten but it's uh, it's nice to get them on straight if you can so that's on there and then if we compare this now uh, so actually I'm going to say that's absolutely fine. Uh, another good way is just to turn the wheels and just see how much resistance, because if they're too tight, you'll, you'll feel it. But actually, I think, that, I think that's pretty good. So um, at this point, you know, depending on the device, um, you can actually test it, because we should just be able to access the, uh, the battery through here. Sometimes you have to put the backs on some of them, so yeah so as you see there now when we press play all working fine so that's good and what we can do uh, is just pop uh, a set of headphones back in let's go into our headphone jack put the tape back in I can't remember which side it was So you can hear that absolutely fine now so all working well but what i'm going to do now is i don't just stop there i'm going to take this up to the computer um, and use a calibration tape which and um, speed it up and slow it down until it's exactly the right uh, turning it at exactly the right speed then i'll come back and uh, pop the screws back in and clean the device up uh, cosmetically so see you in a minute Back from doing the speed calibration it was actually really close um, as it was uh, hardly needed anything uh, which is good what i did notice was so basically what you're doing is you're playing a frequency into it and then you're adjusting the speed to change the frequency in your if you know what frequency it should be you can then generate the frequency on this on the software by making it faster or slower so 
if you get one where you're playing the frequency and it's just hitting that frequency you know that it's like absolutely perfect if if you get a slightly what if it's kind of just moving up and down around around the frequency that you, that kind of um says it's going to be a little bit of wow and flutter so rather than just holding a note like it would be like like so you you it just gives you an indication so there's a little bit on there but um when you listen to it on a device like this through some speakers or headphones it's just par for the course uh, and we'll see it shouldn't be too noticeable uh, and the speed is all good now so at this stage we're going to um re rebuild the device so everything's everything's back in just give the insides a, a quick wipe down um so we'll pop that back on and we know there's that little weird thing that's going to kind of click through so the batteries need to be out of the way there we go so that's all back together i pop the screws back in Like a top trick, I mean, not a top tip. Whenever you're re putting screws back in something, always counter until they sink. Uh, count, turn them counterclockwise first and then put them in. Uh, it, it will just avoid cross threading. So there, you can just get that little click and then pop it in. And don't tighten them all the way up uh, each time. You go, you're going to almost almost fully tight on each and then go around a second or maybe even third time depending good habits even on something like this will pay dividends when you're working on something like a, a circuit board where you want to avoid uh, stressing it so that's all sorted so now we'll just finish off with the cosmetics for the device so first of all just get rid of all the uh, the surface dirt that might be on there as we know from the beginning, this one wasn't too bad. And one thing I did notice, there's a really nice little window there that shows you whether there's a cassette in or not. And I could see there was some dust. It's quite tricky to get into. But I'll get, try and just get in there. Sometimes I will use a, a, a like a plastic polisher on on the uh, surface but this kind of finish does not usually this kind of gunmetal one of the 90s does not particularly like it if anything it kind of wears it down so this as far as i'm going with that same for the back the back's all farting so this is just a, a clean up but what i did say i was going to do was just see if i could get rid of any of those scratches so i have a a clear uh, kind of uh, scratch remover type thing. Yeah, that's nice. It's always just knowing how far to go with stuff like this. So there we can see, nicely reduced down some of those. Only the minor ones, but just enough. So that's all good. And at that point, uh, we now know that, uh, those latches. so we now know, cosmetically cleaned it. We've got rid of all that, those gunk, all the gunk from around the, uh, the switches. We know it works on batteries. We've cleaned all the mechanical parts as well and put a new belt inside. So all we've got left to do really is um, pop a tape back in. I've brought some speakers down so we can listen rather than through the headphones. Uh, and that will be that. And we can have a look at some of the features as well. So. So should we do the radio first?
Now for the travel with Orna Merchant. Really Shops nice clean signal straight away. And we know that we can tune doing these. Let's go to like 97 to 99. Now this gives us an opportunity to probably listen to the mega bass. So you can definitely hear that, that, that working. Uh, we've done it on the bands before. So we've got different modes on here. So let's have a look at this. So we've got, I wonder if that's when you're in tape. So let's try. So we've done the bands, enter, oh, so we've got pre, so that's entered the preset. Um, alarm on and off, alarm stop. So I wonder if we go into tape mode and then see. So there we can, this is for us to, I think, set the time when we're in mode. And then we say, and then what else have we got? So yeah, that's how we, that's how we adjust the, uh, the clock. So we've tried that. We've used, pretty much used all of those buttons. Uh, around the side, let's pop in. So we've done the audio, vo vo we've done the vo volume limiting already. On the, so that was on. You see how it cuts it down? It's supposed to preserve your hearing when you're listening through earphones. Uh, we're in mono at the minute, so we'll try stereo. And that is changing. Good. Uh, what else do we want to do? So now we'll move uh, on to the tape. So depending on the direction, uh, it depends on, on which way th these will operate. So if you've got the kind of direction pointing that way, you'll assume that play will be playing kind of side, side, um, Whichever side's facing it, so side, let's go like this, side one. So like that, that should play side one. Stop the wind. And fast forward. You see now if we go like this, it will play the other side. And in fact, you also on this tape because this is a normal. You want to, you want it on normal rather than metal. You won't always hear a difference, but sometimes you will. And then this mode will be whether or not it, it circles round A to B or um, or repeats a side, I think. We're not probably going to be able to get a chance to test that out because we're right in the middle. We can, we can have a look. Let's see if we take it all the way to the end. All right, I think we're getting there. All right, let's try that now. So that's the end of the tape. And now uh, you hear, hear that click. And then it's, it's the other side's just kicking in. So that shows you listen to one side and it automatically goes onto the other. Whereas I reckon if you rewind, and you don't have that on. So what's that done? I wonder if it, so I reckon, so that did click over, didn't it? So I wonder if it just clicks once and knows it's gonna do, yeah, so that'll be a repeat. So it does A then B, but this one's gonna do A then B, or one then two, then one then two. So now what you have to remember is when you're going opposite direction, this one is now fast forward, so it's opposite to, um, to, the, to the play button direction. Pop 
so uh, that was a kind of behind the scenes look at the, uh, the the time, effort and work that goes into just doing something like uh, uh, turning around one of these uh, Sony Walkmans. This was a Sony Walkman, it was the WMF 45 uh, from when did I say it was? It was between 1992 to 94 and in fact we knew the exact date, someone remind me, uh, that was because it was written on the motor wasn't it? Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, I'm going to see if people prefer the kind of behind the scenes to the demos at the end. Um, if you did please like, share, comment and let me know if you prefer this or, or not uh, and until the next one all the best, take care and see you.